Good morning, everybody. Whoa, that's nice and loud. <laughs> I thought we would do a hymn sing once. So if you have some favorite hymns or a favorite one, we have to use the hymn books down underneath the, the chairs. Sometimes it's easier to reach to the one in front of you instead of your own. But um, if you have a favorite, you can just shout it out and let me know. Um, I, if you don't, if I don't hear from you, I've got a long list picked out already. So <laughs> give me your, a favorite hymn that you would just like to sing or hear this morning. So. Anybody have a favorite? No? How Great Thou Art? Okay, How Great Thou Art. I'll try to find the hymn number. How Great Thou Art is 801. 801. We'll just do the first verse. Is that all right, Aaron? What was that? I know my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think that's 461. Yep. 461. Anyone have another favorite? How about 507, Beautiful Savior? I mean, it's holy, 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 I'm sorry. 507.
710. Okay, have him 710, the Lord's my shepherd. everybody we're doing a hymn sing so if you have a favorite hymn that you would like to sing we'll just do the first verse today um, just shout it out what did you say 744. amazing grace thank you Joe amazing grace 744 and just it won't be on the screen so you have to grab your hymn book from the chair in front of you Other choice, a favorite hymn. That's what we're looking for. We're doing whatever song you pick out. I'm sorry. 672. Thank you. 672, Jerusalem the Golden. Say it again. 837. 837. Lift high the cross.
Jane, did you say 770? Yes. Okay, 770. And this will be the last one. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Indeed, with joy and gladness, we come to hear God's word and receive from him the blessings of word and sacrament. Our order of service today is divine service setting for and happy Father's Day. Let's take a moment and share the peace of Christ with those around us.
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive our sins and grant us new life in your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let the peoples praise you, O God. eternal God, in the word of your apostles and prophets, you have proclaimed to us your saving will. Grant us faith to believe your promises, 
that we may receive eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading point for this day is taken from Exodus, the 19th chapter. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, What that the Lord, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle lesson is taken from Romans, the fifth chapter. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would even dare to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of the Holy Gospel. Tenth chapters. Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching them in synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, 
James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. You receive without pain, give without pay. This is the word of the Lord. Let us together make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May you see, at this time we invite the children to come forward. I'm sorry. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Are you having a thumbs up day or a thumbs down day? Good. Some good thumbs up days. Those are great ones. Hey, I got a question for you. How many have had mom or dad or maybe a grandpa or a grandma, somebody ask you, what do you want for your birthday? <laughs> have you had that question? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they've asked you this. What would you like for Christmas? Have you had that question asked of you? Um, maybe like this. What would you like for supper? What do you want for supper? Or what do you want for lunch? Has anybody ever asked you that question? You've done all of them. You've kind of gotten all those. What do those questions have the same? Yeah. They're all asking what you want. And why is that? Because... We want stuff, don't we? So what are some of the things that you want? Can you tell me some things that you want? What's something you want? Uh, one of the family members asked me what I wanted. <laughs> a million cats and dragons. That's a good want. Grandpa and Grandma, start working on it. <laughs> okay. What's something else that you want? Yeah. Perfect job, which fits you exactly right and makes no money at all. <coughs> okay. I'm, what would you, what do you want? A cat and a dragon. Yeah, we kind of got that thing going on. A pet cow. Anybody else want anything? Anything at all? What would you want? Oh, so 
them more twice so your cat doesn't chew them up? That's good, yeah. Should we ask them what they want? What would you want? Peace on earth. That's a good one. Anything else? You pick two more. There's sky's the limit. What do you want? What do you want? Your eye not to be black. <laughs> and see, he kept his eye on the ball, literally. Uh, one more. What do you want? Somebody's got to have something. A million dollars. Okay. This, see, we all have things we want. Sometimes it's hard to say in front of people because you don't know if it's the right answer. But everybody has stuff that we want. But if you listen to today's sermon, you're going to kind of hear something strange. Because today, King David prayed and taught us to pray, I shall not want. That's interesting. He says we should not want. Does that mean it's wrong to want things? No. But what King David is telling us is that even though there are things that we want, maybe cats and dragons and toys and million dollars and neat jobs and I don't know, you know, whatever it might be, God says, I will give you what you need. It might be what you want, but not always. So today, God says, even you may want it, but it's more important to get what you need than what you want. Is there a difference? Yes. Yeah. And God says, we should focus on what we need that God provides and not be so concerned about what we want because it may not be good for us. You think we can learn that? Because what's the most important that thing that all of us need? Rain. No, it was the farmers. What's the most important thing that we all need? Can anyone think of that? What is that? Food and water. That's really close, but I think that might be second. If everyone turn around and look up on the wall, can you give me a hint? What's the most important thing we all need? Everyone say it together. Jesus, right? And that's the most important thing. Let's fold our hands and pray. Dear Jesus, help us to see what we need. It's more important than what we want. And you give us all that we need. Amen. All right. You may want.
mercy and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Dear friends, have you ever been in jail? No. I, I don't mean just been to visit a jail. I mean, <coughs> have you ever been locked up behind bars and in jail? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> that wasn't intended to be a confession, but we'll talk later. It, it's not a fun existence. It's a rather eerie feeling when you hear that bar click behind you. Uh, it's, it's scary, it's intimidating, and the knowledge that you don't have the freedom to leave whenever you want. I, I've had a couple of experiences over the years as a pastor to visit jails. I can confess I have never been on the other side, but just as a visitor, both in a county jail and, and on two different occasions in state prisons, I have to admit, it is extremely intimidating. I've been to the county jail in, in Blackhawk. I've been to the one in, in, in Sioux City. I've been to county jail in Michigan. I've been to two state prisons, uh, one in, in, uh, in Iowa and, and one in, in Michigan and at Concordia Ann Arbor. Uh, I was a part of a, a college team that we did weekly worship services, or excuse me, monthly worship services at the state prison in Jackson, Michigan. And, and, and you guys know me, I, I, I like to kid and tease and, and kind of have fun. And, and I will tell you, there is no joking, there's no teasing, there's no fun when you go to jail, even to do a worship service on a Sunday morning at a minimum security prison. It's all serious and it's all business. And it's very intimidating. Now, I was at a minimum security prison and I was in a county jail where this wasn't the best, but to tell you, even the guards intimidated me, the prisoners, the inmates intimidated me. I can't even fathom if I were at a prison where it was like one of the really bad ones, one of those supermaxes like San Quentin or, or you know, Pelican Bay or Rikers Island or something like that how upsetting it would be to be in a place like that. But as bad as those places are, there's one that's even worse than that. There's one that is overcrowded in all of its conditions, as terrible as they are. There's a prison in which every single resident is there for life. The population is over 8 billion. It's the prison that all of us are part of. It's the jail of want. You see, we are all caught up and wrapped up in this prison of want, seeking what only we want. No matter how old or how young a person is, whether you're a little child that, that wants kittens and, and dragons, or an adult that wants world peace or a million dollars. All of us have wants. Every single one of us is a prisoner that cries out, whether it's verbally or simply in our own heart and mind, I want. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. We may not tell it because we know it's not always politically correct or appropriate, but all of us have this prison of want in which we are held captive. A baby wants to be fed. A small child wants a new toy. A teenager wants a car to drive. A, 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 a young adult wants a job or a better job. An elderly person wants to help to maintain or, or they want the children to come back and visit them more often. The prison of want is real as it gets. And it never goes away. Because all of us want something bigger, something faster, something nicer, something shinier. We always want something. It's in our broken, sin-infected DNA. It's our own prison of want. We often want just one more thing thinking that this uh, one more, whatever it might be, is what we need to satisfy this inner longing for happiness. One more job, one more promotion, one more vacation. 
One more outing, one more new car, one more bigger house, one more dollar in the bank, one more night out, one more younger, more attractive spouse. Our desire, our need for one more want is a greedy need. And we've convinced ourselves that just one more and we'll be happy. We'll be satisfied. And everything will be all right. And that's what makes the second message in our series on the 23rd Psalm so interesting. Because as King David wrote this beautiful psalm, he declares so incredibly, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <clears throat> now, now, we've said these words hundreds of times uh, in, in our hearts, in our minds, and in churches, and at different places. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And as often as we repeat those verbally, or even in our prayers, how many times, I wonder, do those words get translated between our head and our heart into the ears of the Lord? It, rather than, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, it sounds more like, the Lord is my shepherd, I still want one more. Just a little bit extra. <coughs> we can't deny the truth. No matter who we are, or what our vocation is, or what our situation is, life is, Everybody wants a little bit more. I remember a few years ago when I was with my daughter Lexi and we had taken, gone to Africa and we were on safari. And it was an amazing place. We had gone into the, the Masamari uh, safari, uh, savannah. And it was an incredible place. And, and we'd been out there for a couple of days and we stopped at a Maasai village the Maasai warriors, to, to kind of get a sense of the culture. And, and they took us around, and, and we got to see these Maasai warriors. And these are the ones who, who jump up and down to show how powerful they are. And the higher they jump in their dance, the, the more virile they are. And the, the men kind of attract their women by, by the way they dance and jumping up and down. And it was, it was quite a sight to see them uh, perform this, this uh, ceremony in front of us. And after they had kind of performed their, their, their dancing and their show of virility and their strength, uh, one of the village elders uh, saw me there and, and I had been introduced as, as a pastor. And, and he pulled me aside uh, as we were touring the, the little village. And he asked the question, he said, Sir, is your daughter able to marry? <laughs> Being me and, and the way I think the world, I kind of thought he was joking because that's how I think. And I responded, um, sure, but uh, I, I thought you were married. You introduced me to your wife and your, your kids. And his response in all seriousness, oh, I am married. I have three wives, but, but I would like one more. He wasn't joking. He said, 200 cows. That's what I will pay for your daughter. Which I found out later was very generous. <laughs> A cow is worth $2,000. I almost took him up. <laughs> Lexi's not here. But the truth of the matter is, the desire for one more is universal. The Masa Meyer warrior, these people living in the savannah of Africa, wanted just one more, just one more wife. It doesn't matter where you are in life or where you live or, or the prison of want is as real as it gets. It affects our whole world, the poor, the rich, the male, the female, the Maasai warrior, and yes, the Lutheran pastor. A few years back, a, a missionary came through uh, to, to visit the local churches have been supporting him. He had been serving the, the bush country and, and Africa. And, and during the time of questioning and answering after his presentation, he was asked the question, what's the biggest challenge that the people face when you witness to them? When you share them the good news of Jesus Christ, what's the biggest challenge that you have? And the missionary responded without blinking, greed. Which kind of caught everyone off guard. Greed. They have nothing. 
How can you say greed is their biggest challenge? He said, greed is universal. They have a straw roof on their hut, and they're greedy for a wooden one. Because even in these far distant places, the desire for one more is universal. Indeed, it's a travesty that all of us are held captive in the prison of want. Now, now don't misunderstand me. We, don't, we do occasionally get paroled from this, this little prison that we make for ourselves. It usually happens for a short period of time after we get something new. After we get the fulfillment of our dream, you know, what we've been wishing for, working for, planning for. That there, there's a short parole period when you get that new car. And it may last anywhere from a couple days to a couple of months when it, everything, is, the smell is still there. But what happens in time? It wears off. And slowly we go back into the prison and our wants return. We know the reality that our wants will never be satisfied. We want something different. That's the nature of our sinful reality. Our human appetites will never be satisfied. Even when we are attempting to live the Christian life in praying our prayers, our prayers are often more a wish list than they are a lifting up to God. Our prayers are like, Lord, give me success. Lord, make me happy. Lord, turn the lives of these other people so there won't be such jerks. Our Lord, our, a wish list of things we want from God to fix. If you follow any sports team, which every Iowan does, whether you're Iowa State or Iowa or a Panther fan or whatever it might be, how many of us pray that our team will have success? Now we do it in jest because we know that's not the Lutheran thing to do. But we want just one more win or one more championship or one more scholarship player. How many of our prayers sound like this? Father, use me in your kingdom. Lord, help me to, to seek the lost. Open up gateways in my life that I may be able to share your good news with the people around me. Make me a missionary in, in my life that others can hear and know you through the good news in my life. I, I would dare say the majority of prayers are not like that. Living in the prison of want turns us inward. It's all about our focus, our needs, our wants, our desires. It rarely looks at what is God's will for our lives. And that turns our lives into the prison of want. It's universal. It even exists in the kingdom of animals. The Bible talks about it. They live in that same prison of want. I, I didn't realize that until I was preparing this lesson. If you go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, it speaks to this truth. It says, the leech has two daughters. They are give and give. Three things that are never satisfied. Four never say enough. Sheol, the barren womb, the land never satisfied with water. The fire that never says enough. This idea that, that we live in a constant battle for more is universal to a broken creation. St. Paul understood that. When we read his letter to the Romans, he understood this reality. He said, I know that nothing good lives in me and my flesh. I have the desire to do what's right. I know in my head what I'm supposed to say, I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to think. But I can't do it. I don't have the ability to carry it out. I do not do the good that I want. But that evil I do not want, that's what I keep doing. Now if I don't do what I want, it's no longer I who lives, but it's sin that lives within me. How many of us understand Paul's struggle? I know what's right, but I don't get it done. It's not just outside there, but it's even within the context of the church. The Christian church has embraced, in, in many sectors, has embraced this life of want. There, there's a whole branch of Christianity that's tailored their worship and theology 
to affirm and encourage this way of thinking. It's the fastest growing segment of Christianity. We call it the prosperity gospel. And these preachers are attracting thousands and thousands of people. All by telling them that, that God wants you to, to be successful and have everything you want here on earth right now. It teaches that God wants to grant you your earthly desires and fulfill every worldly want. People like Joel Olstein, his most famous selling book, is entitled The Best Life Now. Because he's simply preaching to our sinful desire for want. Now, he's not alone. You can go on and you can list people like Creflo Dollar and Benny Hinn and T.D. Jakes and Joyce Meyer. They're all catering to the sinful nature of the prisoners of want. What a challenge to live in this prison. We all go to the pastors and the shepherds of desire. We're drawn to those who would tell us exactly what we want to hear and tell us it's okay, rather than to listen to the words that King David spoke in Psalm 23. Remember, when David wrote this most beautiful psalm, as I said last week, the single most popular scripture verse in all of America, and the second phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord, who is our shepherd. What's beautiful about this shepherd that we have, it's him and him alone who can throw open the doors of the prison of want in which we live. You see, that's why he came. Not to help us remain captive, but to simply set us free. Our good shepherd frees us from this prison of want. The faithful shepherd is the one who opens the gates and sets us free. He did it when he took our place on the cross. He became the prisoner and we became the free man. He became sin and we became declared sinless. This divine swap became our reality. His sin for our sinlessness that on the cross of Calvary he took away our guilt and shame and made us righteous in the eyes of God and declares us as holy people. That all the sins of want and all the desires that are against God have been wiped away by his blood on the cross. Our wants were crucified there too. We no longer are held captive by that old nature that says I have to live according to this old self. The gates of prison have been thrown open. They died with him when he died. They were washed away in the waters of baptism where there we put to death that old man and we were raised again a new creation. As a redeemed child of God washed in the waters of baptism, you have been set free from the prison of want. That's what was powerful by the words that Jesus spoke from the cross. It wasn't just a completion of acts. It was a statement to your release when Jesus said, It is finished! The prison that holds you is gone. You no longer are held captive and bound by that old nature. It's over. It's done. No longer live in jail, but step out into the freedom of life. That was enough in Christ. We have everything we could ever want and need. That's what David was saying. That is our call to faith. That's what Luther said when he described for us in the large catechism, the seventh commandment, about not stealing. He said, don't steal, but he said, the opposite, don't steal, is learn to be content with the God who's given you all that you need. I don't want any more other than what God provides for me. Because that's enough for right now. Because he's given me more than I could ever imagine. He's given me freedom and release. He's given me life and salvation. He's given me joy and hope. And when I have those things in my life, then there's nothing in this world that could ever compare. Why would I diminish myself to want the scraps from the table when I've been given the holy feast of God's grace and mercy? The Lord is my shepherd, and I don't have wants because I've been given it all. This is what God speaks to us. What David is teaching us, Jesus is our good shepherd this beautiful good shepherd of ours. 
We have the grace to know that, that he's the shepherd that gives us all these blessed good news, these great good things, and we don't have to want. Paul learned that too. This was Paul's lesson when he spoke to the, to the Philippian congregations. He said, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation to be content. To be content. That's my desire, to find the contentment in Christ that we have in him. That he gives us this beautiful, wonderful contentment that because of Christ and the new life we have in him, we no longer have to chase the shiny objects of life thinking that they will somehow satisfy our desire, desires and needs. People living in San Quentin or Rikers Island, they want freedom from oppression. You have it. The Maasai elder wants another wife. The African people want a wooden roof. The world around us wants more stuff here and now because they don't have what we have been given. The certainty of an abundant life in all eternity. And when we have that, this stuff means nothing. But you know the truth, we've been given all we need. That's what it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Our Lord gives us everything. But I've got to say that God has a want. Did you know that? He, he speaks of his want. The Lord has a want. He spoke of it in, in Timothy. This is good. It's pleasing in the sight of God. The Lord's desire, the Lord's want, if you will, is what? That all people be saved and come to the knowledge of the Lord. Come to the knowledge of salvation. Be set free from the prison of want and be released into the kingdom of eternity. That's God's desire. And, and in our prayers, no longer do we make a wish list of the things that God can do to make our lives easier or better or, or fulfill our dreams. But maybe our prayers can be turned to this. Lord, move your work in my life that, that I can fulfill your wishes, your dreams, your want, that all people who come to the knowledge of the truth and live with you eternally. And in his son, the faithful good shepherd, we come to know the one who sets us free from prison and into a blessed life where his green pastures are there for all eternity. So we can speak with a clarity that we've never spoke with before and a meaning to that word that we've maybe never thought about before. The Lord indeed is our shepherd. And I shall not want. Amen. May the peace which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand for prayer. God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that this day you open up your kingdom of heaven to us through your word. Help us to see that indeed we as selfish people confess our, our selfishness in listing only our wants. Lord, we rejoice and thank you that you've set us free from the prison. Help us to step out of that prison that we create for ourselves and step into the light and the promise of eternity and the gifts of all good grace that you give to us that you fulfill all our needs here on earth and with the hope that is to come. And Lord, help us to see your desire and your want. Move us to be vehicles that we may fulfill your will in this world by extending that kingdom to those who have not known you. Lord, we lift up and pray for those who are still in needs on this side of heaven. We remember Gary, Linda, and Bernice. Care for them and watch over them. As their hours remain few on earth, we ask you to bless them and bring them safely and securely into your eternity, that we may join together again one day in the great hope of everlasting life. We pray all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty God, for the countless blessings you shall freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Christ on the same night betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given to you for the forgiveness of sins do this in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament of my blood which is shed for you for the mission of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always
true body and true blood, strengthen and preserve you, steadfast in the faith and to life everlasting. Depart in peace and in great joy. Thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace.
morning. Good morning. Welcome everyone this morning, especially those who are with us today as guests and visitors. Uh, just uh, Jackie sent me a text on my watch as we were finishing up the service. We have somebody that's joined us online for our service this morning from uh, Kenya, and his neighbors are the Maasai warriors, and he thought it was interesting that everything I said was a lie. <laughs> no, he said, no, he said that's consistent with what he's heard. So um, our technology allowed somebody in Kenya, Africa, to hear our sermon and to feel like he was connected to it uh, live as we're going through it. So, you know, the, thank God for the technology and the ability to share that word of God this morning. Just a couple of uh, announcements. Uh, don't forget, Vacation Bible School starts a week from today. Uh, there's still lots of room for volunteers, uh, lots of opportunities to, to provide food if you want to go through the welcome desk. Um, so stop by there and fill out those uh, welcome desks. Um, we still need some volunteers for Sturgis Falls. You've got to get, we're going to have t-shirts for all the volunteers. We've gotten those for the first year, so you've identified. So uh, stop by, talk to uh, Cindy or Jackie uh, for volunteer spots to help out with Sturgis Falls. That starts this Friday. Um, and so we can pick up those uh, events coming up on Friday. Um, blessed Father's Day to all our fathers today. Uh, if you're a father, would you just raise your hand? Okay, congratulations to your fathers. I think it's not too late to run out to Menards and get some sort of tool, something with anything with power, I think is a good gift. Have a very blessed day. Thank you. 